Okay, I'm recording. So here we are um, again. And uh, everybody read, we had chapters 15 and 16. Yes. And I, you saw my, my notes on, in terms of trying to think about everything that happens to everybody in these chapters. Right. Can you restate them? Oh, well, what I was saying is I was seeing how the, 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 the state interferes with every decision that people are trying to make um, based mm -hmm. on their own well-being and on their own needs. But every time they've mm -hmm. got to navigate this whole series of other yeah. other um, decisions. So I was wondering I, it, what people, what you thought and if there were particular aspects of the the things that happened to um, their, their characters, Kira, Leo, and uh, Andre, that were that stood out to you as being good examples of this. Well, you, I believe you also mentioned the theme plot and the, mm -hmm. the plot theme. Yeah. Can you can you reiterate that again about the theme plot? Oh well. So 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 it's the state against. So it's the, the individual, individual against the the state. Right. And um, as Rand would like to put out that she thinks that the individual is the good, is the hero and, and the state is the villain in this in this story. And um, so what she's putting in, I think, in these chapters are um, examples of how the state keeps tripping up the individuals um, from right. the, the, the possibly the the logical, the natural choices that they would make, but how the, the state yeah. has put up all of these obstacles. And that, yeah. okay. so by advancing that, the theme through these, uh, through the plot, through the action. And, and practically speaking, that means that every paragraph or every sentence, well, maybe not every sentence, but every little episode or scene should be theme based is that yes. is that yeah, true I, as that's, that's how i that's how i read it i mean it, every it seems like every paragraph hammers home this point yeah i agree and I, I don't think um i if you've read at all her um you know she's she's not a person who um, is in favor of the arbitrary in terms of what she puts in her novels. Everything is, is, is distinctly there for, for a reason. And I'm sure she, um, she could tell you uh, every single reason she had. For everything and she that's the mind. That's act, Marilyn. Actually, that's the mindset of a screenwriter. That's where you deal with limited time. An awful lot of what she learned from structuring scenes uh, came not only from uh, Victor Hugo and um, Maurice Maeterlinck and, and all the plays, but they came from working for Cecil B. DeMille. Yeah, and, um, and that's where she really, really honed her craft. And um, uh, and she's damn good. Very good. Um, I, so what you're seeing is, yes, the, the state coming in at every turn and interposing its will and uh, basically uh, eradicating or obliterating uh, individual choices. And what came to mind, because my dad was a, a general practitioner, what came to mind is uh, Britain's NHS. And the story is, uh, I'll make the story very short. Hi, Ron. He got a, hi, Ron. Hi. He got a, a couple of patients from Nigeria by way of uh, uh, of Great Britain, and uh, at first he thought, you know, did they know my mom? You know, because my mom was a Yorkshire woman or whatever. And no, they looked him up in internationals who's who, and the reason was the son had a heart condition. And he was shuffled to the end of the line every time he was waiting in the queue at the free clinic. Why? Because he was black. And so they got frustrated and they came to see him 
and everything was fine. But this is a, a, a perfect example. And this is in a, a, a putatively free country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I still think of Britain as a free country, but I mean, it, it's heavily socialist since uh, the late 19th century. And uh, Yaron Brook, whose name I don't like to invoke too much here, but uh, he uh, gave a talk at Exeter two years ago. And he said, well, you know, you ought to eradicate the NHS. And they all looked at him as though they had slapped. He had, they'd all been slapped. Hmm. Well, well, in the story, but I thought it was relevant here because it's very interesting, a, a very interesting tie in. Yes. And we do see, uh, obviously, in Chapter 16, we have to deal with some medical medical issues. Exactly. And yes. We see that. Um, and yeah, so they, they start very, um, you know, every single thing that it, that is done. I, I, I pointed out that small that short scene with Kira in the morning and how she just has to talk herself into these things. Uh, otherwise, the, to try to get through the dreary conditions that, that, that she's living in. And I, I was just wondering if what other uh, parts of these of this chapter that struck uh, you did you find interesting and want, would want to talk about? Um, Lindsay, Ron, Michael? Well, I thought that the, the hypocrisy that was displayed by his inability to get medical treatment mm -hmm. and only for the yeah. only for those that are part of the party or only for those that belong to a union yeah. can get medical attention and and I just thought that was just devastating to most people I mean the you know I also thought the hypocrisy showed up in a regal way when Victor was allowed to continue in the university, even though he was the son of a uh, of a successful businessman before the before the revolution. So, I you know I, I don't understand. I'm having a hard time understanding the philosophy that it's okay for one person to die, but not for all. And yeah, I mean, it, it, not for those that are selected as part of the group or part of the the the. Um, the selected few that are allowed to succeed and those that aren't based on their political or alliance or their their ability to be in a union and it just doesn't make sense to me marilyn there's a there's a an interesting uh, well an aside um there's a famous uh film shot of marilyn monroe in the movie i think it's uh, niagara yeah, Balls, I know the film. Yeah. Where she walks away, and it's the longest scene ever of a woman's backside walking. <laughs> so it lasts for like a couple of minutes or something, just walk, yeah. walk. Yeah. And the story is that she clipped her shoe heel so that she, her hips would rotate naturally. And um, I'm bringing that up because in that in that movie, the other actress who's kind of like also young and pretty, says oh, to her boyfriend, oh, she, that woman has been doing this since she was 12, has, has been practicing this. And with Kira, it's obvious that she's tone deaf. She's not part, even if she tries, even if she works it, it's not something that's natural for her to interact with people in an inauthentic way. Yes. So it's yeah. it's like she's out of practice where all the rest right. of them have been practicing this since they were little kids. They right. like Victor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. They've been taught to um to um the the women that she's grown up have been taught to um uh, uh, appeal to men um and to uh play the game in a certain way and she just can't do that. Uh, she almost thinks like a bloke. I mean, she just, you know, if this is what I want to do. I want to work and whatever. And then, so you know that the love for Leo, uh, in some cases, it's a bit mystifying, but it's genuine. Genuine. And I, um, because I'm returning to this book after 30 years and forgotten most of it, it's just amazing how... Um, genuine and actually touching are the scenes between them mm. 
when she gets up in the morning at the beginning of uh, chapter 15 and the, the alarm rings and she can't get up, but she gets up. She wants to collapse, but she doesn't collapse. And she knows, intuitively, she knows that there's something wrong with Leo. Uh, and uh, she nearly becomes late for work. And if she's late, she'll be fired. Uh, how's that for a great employer? You know, and that's the state. Yeah. You know, everything, everything, everything through the state. And it's, um, it's horrible. And it's, uh, like I said, it was an SOS. And no one wanted to hear the story. No one wanted to hear the message because everyone was too much in love with Uncle Joe and, and, and all that. And we were going through a Great Depression here in the United States during the 1930s. And so no one wanted to hear that. Uh, and I think that still, even now, while the book is selling like hotcakes and is still selling and the sales are escalating, um, she's due for a major critical reevaluation. In time, I think it will come because just the degree, they, you know, someone was sounding an alarm and no one wanted to hear it. And now there's no Soviet Union. No, Hello? No. Hello? Who's, who's coming in here? No, I'm. I'm just saying that it's a sort oh, of. A, no, I heard another. Yeah, they're, they're clueless. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, um go ahead. Mike. Something I thought was interesting was the um, just position of the opera, mm -hmm. to having operetta. So, you know, saving saving what little money they had instead of you know food, right. instead of buying eggs and butter. Right. It's like right. let's go to the opera, wow. and. Um, I'm surprised that the Soviet Union allowed the operas to exist. So that I found interesting, that that was, yeah. they obviously didn't put the importance on art as Kira and Rand feel, as, a, as, as, as something to touch people's spirits and make them feel human. They, they co-opted art. I mean, um, you, you know the story of Shostakovich, right? Um, no, I don't. But you know what? Could we just try to, could we stay yeah, on here? Because sure. I think we won't get covered everything. But that scene with the art, uh, with the, uh, I think that's there in one reason because it, uh, remember at the end where Kira bursts into tears. Um, mm. And again, it's just that sense of the only way that any of this is going to happen for them, anything like fun or a yeah. pretty dress or anything like that is only going to be in, in fiction on, on, on the mm -hmm. stage that, that I yeah. think that it really hits home for Kira. Yeah. That she's yeah. never going to have a chance like that. Um, and it is, it's, it's very sad, but, and Ron, you brought up too about who deciding who gets what, do, but do you remember um, in chapter 16 the, about the, about the purge and do you remember the questionnaire right 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 exactly i mean they asked they 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 when kira found out she had been rejected and and um andre asked if there were any exceptions and and the guy he was talking to said absolutely not there are no exceptions to this rule mm -hmm. that anyone that was the, the sibling or the i mean the son or the daughter of someone who was successful before will never get allowed Right. And, 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 and yet here's Victor. <laughs> well, you know? and he, how does Victor, Lindsay, do you, how does Victor get that position? What does he do? Well, he joins the, he joins the, the party. Yeah, yeah, he joins the party, but he also like does some favors for some people. Like he gets this woman, he likes basically steals a room from Kira and Leo and gives it to this woman who he's sleeping with. Right. Well, there's that. Who's in the party? Who's in the party? And you know, uh, yeah. Baba, the, this woman who keeps showing up, right? Yeah. And she's got very, uh, she's got, I guess, perfect proletariat credentials, and he mm -hmm. is courting. He is courting her. Um, do you think I, that the wait? Do you think Lady Sonia had anything to do with it? Who? Do you think Sonia had anything to do with it? 
I don't know. They don't really seem like they have much of a relationship. I think he just worked these other two angles. I think he worked all the angles that he could to try to save himself. I mean, he's not really, it's not really for anyone else. It's interesting. Sonia has a lot to do with a lot of things, but um, I haven't seen them be good for anybody yet. So, uh, <laughs> but those questions too, did you notice they're about, they're not about your accomplishments um, or what you're- Oh, the questions. The questions. Yeah. Oh, and I thought it's all that, about who you know. Who, right, who, where yes. you were born. But I yes. thought it was interesting because there's sort of a, we were talking about mirrors yesterday in um, the Fountainhead, but the idea that it's sort of this reverse aristocracy. Yes. There's yeah. also, the questions are a little bit like original sin. Oh. It has nothing to do with the person. They, they just were born. Right. What the parents did. And so it's like, yeah. you were born aristocratic, therefore it's like original sin. You're off our list. Yes. Right. Exactly. That's absolutely the, right. The people they're penalizing had nothing to do with their condition. And yet right. they're being blamed for it and, and, being, and being penalized, which is really not fair to anyone. <laughs> Because you have no control over who your parents are and what they do. I mean, it's like right. <laughs> you're just born. I mean, you, you don't have a choice. And so your parents are either successful or they're not. And so, I, you know, it and, just and seems also, very odd. Yeah, yeah. The, the resentment um, becomes uh, incredibly vindictive to the point where, you know, people are being shot and murdered simply for no better reason than they were born the uh, wrong class and um yeah yes so kira the, and the, leo they fill Marilyn, can i ask how much how much of this is fiction and how much of it really occurred i mean is this really the way people were treated in russia after the revolution i mean is this factual at any degree or is it just pure fiction um well we know from uh uh Alexander Solzhenitsyn's document of the Gulag Archipelago, and we also know from um, the work of uh, Robert Conquest um, that um, Ram, if anything, was probably being generous. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, it wow. was awful. Wow. Really? Because didn't also 50 million people or some ungodly number die? Staggering number, yeah. Um, from poverty and from the gulag or from, or from the, the camps. Right. Stalin was probably the world's biggest butcher mm -hmm. among dictators. I mean, he was just boggles mm -hmm. the imagination. Yeah. Yeah. So you just yeah, send them off and start them. Itself specifically it happened to anybody, but I think everything that's in the story, uh, many things that are in the story are, are, um, are uh, from well, things that were happening. I don't think she invented this. Um, no. Operations. No, I mean, there was like, the, well, there was a great purge. It was called the great purge where they like killed many, many people. Um, so when that term came up, I was like, oh, I mean, that made me think of right. that. So yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't feel like the representation here is that off. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, it's just to say that it, Rand is making it personal. Like, there is no jobs. And so the one job you have, and then you lose the job, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's no, yes. there's no recourse except for manual labor that no one else wants to do or, you know, can make it through or prostitution. Right. And let's talk about the work ethic. Yeah. <laughs> when people do have have the jobs, what sort of um, remember that bit about the word the word Soviet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Right, so we have to okay, so, so, but that that's like um, she's she's showing actually that foreshadows a little bit like who is John Galt. So she's talking yep. like a term that has meanings. Yes. And she kind of describes what the meaning is kind of like a horrible inside joke. Yes. Soviet soap or whatever, that, that but that it's a too, euphemism it's for the same reference. Yeah, John Galt, right. For yeah. something that doesn't work, it's anonymous. Yeah. It's like you do not want Soviet products, right? And then she made them I human. Also, talk about the girls being Soviet girls, right? <laughs> I also thought it was interesting that Kira gets fired because she doesn't have social skills, which means to stand around a desk and talk about their conquests or lack thereof. And oh, right. exactly. <laughs> That, uh, that horrible attempt to try to sound cavalier about yeah it's like <laughs> you know, you know, you just feel and that so ends bad. up getting her fired from her job you know that, that her lack of social interaction <laughs> and then who who was it was it comrade sonia or maybe it was her boss but said um we know that the bourgeois are only saying these things because they want to keep their jobs. Yeah. And she hits the nail right directly, yeah. nails yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And right. so, think of how perverse that is. Well, of course they want to keep their jobs. <laughs> yes. Right? At least from our point of view, yes. I, mm. I show up at my job and I work hard and do what I'm supposed to do because, well, I like it and I want to keep it. But that is, that's a value. That's not a value. Um, right. There. Well, they're not getting you to spout things that you don't believe in. No, but I'm saying that value that they they don't value having the job or doing the work. They right. have the job because they're who they are. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's a reversal again of um, of, of, of values of capitalist values in terms yeah. of right because Kira only has her job because of Andre. And his connections within the party, and it's up to her to maintain that job. And I think, by what Bran has written, she does a good job, and she tries to do the right thing, and she tries to do, you know, quality work. And yet, because she can't fit in with the other ones who don't <laughs> care about their jobs, she gets fired. <laughs> yes, it's just it, it, it's it's blatant uh, hypocrites. I mean. You know that, and and I think it's really sad. I really do. I mean, it to me like it is and it isn't because she is also going through these motions and going to do this thing, and she doesn't believe in any of the things that she's doing. I mean, she's also like knowingly, like trying to keep it, but like faking it to try to keep it. You know, like so. I, I felt like that was a really interesting thing within the structure like yes you want to do the thing but in order to do it you have to like pretend like you have all these ideals and for someone who has a lot of really strong ideals you know that would be really difficult like i don't see how that's ultimately a sustainable position to be in because i would think eventually you would have to say i can't do this anymore because like you would end up like leo like you know screw that i'm not gonna do it i'm just gonna be like you know whatever i don't need it and like that to yeah. me, like what she's doing to sort of carry it is like this moment where you have to make a choice. Like, what do you have to do to stay alive? Like if that that has to become greater than the other things. And so for me, it was really interesting, like kind of reading about how like she'd never really thought about being alive and like what that was or what that would require. And so then she discovers it requires all of these things that I think create a lot of conflict in her internally. Like That's she's really, having yeah. to make choices every day about, you know, what is the most important thing today? Where is the value today? Yeah, that's a real good point, Lindsay, because I, 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 in that the scenes in the office, she tries to be uh, self-sufficient, completely self-sufficient. And then she just figures out that maybe she does need to play the game and it, it is extraordinarily hard for her, and uh, and she's not used to it, and uh, it's it's it, you know it's kind of twisting her inside, 
And uh, for such a person to do that, can you imagine Howard Rourke, for example, uh, deciding he's going to play the game at the office? Yeah. It's, yeah. Can't do it. It wouldn't. That wouldn't happen. So no. I mean, that makes Kira a really interesting character yeah. for me in Rand's universe because she is making these other sorts of allowances. I mean, I really think like her whole thing about cooking, like you can't, like I'm gonna cook, but you can't watch me. You mm -hmm. can't ever see me do this thing. Like the food is just gonna appear. Like it just happened. <laughs> um, and just that notion of that, but yet at the same time, like she wants a really nice new dress and mm -hmm. works really hard to like remake this old thing and then is really disappointed when no one notices. So like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is where is the value just in her role as a woman? Like, yeah, what is acceptable or okay for her? What is she having to do? Because she's having to do a lot of stuff that I think a lot of female characters in literature have had to do. You know, I mean, how many women have like gone behind the scenes in a book to like arrange a situation like what she's trying to do for Leo? Like, she's doing these kind of very traditional female things, but also I think really struggling with the fact that she has to do it. Yeah. Well, in terms of her, the job, it's not like she can go and get a job that she wants that is meaningful no. to her, right? They has to get, um, I don't think, I mean, she just gets this job, someone gives it to her, something like that. And so she's trying to be herself, but there's no place for her really to be that, that self. Uh, Rand also, uh, in a couple of places, um, lays out the motivation for Kira by saying it's for Leo. And so her mind is going through these options. Do I can do this or do that? Or do I bite my lip and keep, keep quiet? Or do I speak out? But mm -hmm. she's realizing that ultimately she needs the job because she needs any future with Leo is dependent upon her keeping this mm -hmm. horrible, um, you know, socialist job. And, and so it, she lays it out pretty clearly that there's only a couple of options here. One is to just say to hell with it and die or to fight for Leo. And then if you're going to do that, you have to like jump on the tram. You have to, um, be a yes person in these jobs. And that's the only option. Yeah. But do you think that her, do you think her, her feelings about Leo are going to change once she, once she witnessed him cheating on her? I mean, do you, do you think that, that she's going to have a change of heart? Well, like she forgave him for that in the moment, like, he was messed up and she was like, I get why that was happening, but like, you know, collect yourself. I think. I think so, because she I wants to go out after that, that and try to help him. Yeah, I think it's sort of interesting that so much of her motivation is driven by her love for this man and not by like what she wanted to do with her life. Like all of a sudden well, what she was doing, doing the other thing that she wanted off. to do with her life right now. Why isn't she doing the other thing that she wanted to do with her life right now? Well, right now it's because she got kicked out of school. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. just took that away from her and mm -hmm. said, yeah. That's, yeah. Never, that's never going to happen. So she had the two things that she valued, which was her, her career and her a romantic love. Um, mm -hmm. And now they've taken one away from her and and then we also see that she's so exhausted and so tired and so it's it's just bombarded that when leo wants to make love with her she has to mentally um do it like a job like oh my god i i have to be awake for this i have to rise to this occasion but i'm not feeling anything i'm just like overwhelmed by, by it, it, it's despair. one step away from okay but you owe me you know <laughs> it, <laughs> it's it's very it's um it's not it's not honeymoon <laughs> right. yes it's she's exhausted right yeah. um, but um 
And but and so and she does everything that she can to make sure to try to be there in in the moment with them. And, and she feels awful that she can't she can't give more. So again, I don't know if I would see it necessarily as being um, uh, as there being something wrong with her. I think that that genuinely she values she values love, and I think she's meant to value it, particularly in this context because if we look at the Soviet way of um, relationships how what what are we finding out um, in terms of uh, men, uh, relationships between um, uh, men and women they seem to be falling uh, apart yeah. yeah about what you can get it's only because you get something from it that like increases your status or your position or whatever. It's not like, you know, oh, I get the joy of spending time with you. Right. So it's not personal. It doesn't seem to be personal. I, I'm struck by something that Mikhail Beristikov said um, when he uh, made the move over here. Then you know, he was on 60 Minutes and someone asked him about um, what life was like in the Soviet Union. He said every day, every minute, people are lying to each other and i thought that was wow you know for him to say that um and i i think that's probably puts a nail on what was going on everyone was basically uh living a pretense out out of fear okay yeah and so she's and she's trying not to she's trying to be honest she's trying to have an honest relationship with Leo, um, she's trying to honestly do her work, even though it's not the work she wanted to do. Uh, but they've forbidden her to do that. Um, what about Andre? Uh, I, I I have a question. I I I read the last chapter of six, uh, sixteen, mm -hmm. so I did fifteen and sixteen, um, but I didn't catch why Andre is turning a cold shoulder to her. Did I miss something? Um, you you don't know yet. Do we know, or is that coming? That's coming up. Yeah, yeah. that'll. That's coming up. Yeah. So it's just. So that was a puzzling. I was like, "What's going on there? What happened?" Right. Michael, Michael, I read ahead. It's coming up. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. I'm good. Don't spoil it. But there is that. Um, uh, it's interesting too that uh, I mean, because Kira continues to see Andre um, regularly, right? And she even at one point says to Leo, "I, you know, do do you mind?" Um, you know, which is nice. She checks in on his feelings, but I think also she's you like, know, "Well, but I'm going to, but I'm going to see him." Um, so, um, and he says, "No, I don't mind. It's just don't bring, just don't bring him here, right?" But um, the um, they have that scene where they're out at the beach. Remember that? Yep. Yeah. And on yeah. In, in, entangled in sand and water. <laughs> right. And it's sort of uh, <laughs> what is that movie? That uh, I forget what it's called. The beach scene. Lord Lancaster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Um. And making oh, some old lady mad. From here to eternity. Is that yeah. Eternity. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Right. See, I think that Andre is just off the rails here. Um, I, I, he's he was present at the point where uh, where Kira loses her her one her chance to right. Here she's purged. From the roles and they ask and they make as you pointed out is there an exception and no no there isn't so he has to know that the things that he put in place have destroyed part of this person this woman that he loves right um right but but he but he but so they can they continue on the two of them i i almost think that they're not coming to terms with what's What's happened? Well, that's the, but thematically, that's the same as as uh, what Kiro's going through with Leo, in the sense that she knows what's going on, and then she's losing her 
desire for him out of just being so tired. And then with with Andre, Andre's um, uh, he, it's well, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Okay. Somebody else, Lindsay, did you have any com what did you think about Andre? Um <laughs> I like Andre. I like Andre as a character a lot more than I like Leo. Um, so do I. Leo's just kind of crabby. Um, well, I think Andre is really interesting. I think Andre is a better sort of intellectual match for her. Um, I sympathize or at least empathize a lot with Andre and his position, you know, which I think is a that says something for Rand, I think, as a writer to say, like, this is a person on the enemy's side, but I still can kind of get behind him. Like I, I think that ultimately, you know, he's I understand what he's doing and what his role is. And in terms of his feelings for her, like, yeah, I think he probably realized like we had this beautiful idyllic day in the countryside and like, you know, now what are we, what are we going to do? Like we can't, they can't do that everywhere else. So, um, yeah. Right, so he sort of set up a life. He's has access to a life that he'd like, but the things that he's put in place actually forbid it, make it impossible for that to actually mm -hmm. ever um, play out. He's involved yeah. in a kind of a contradiction, uh, partly because of his relationship to Kira, and Leo uh, is living in a world that has no place for him now. Yeah, what's going on with Leo? Ron, you were asking about the cough. Um, or <laughs> what's going on with the cough and Leo? Well, I think what's going to happen, I'm just speculating, I haven't read it yet, but I think that, that Andre is going to belly up and Andre is going to bail Kira out because he loves her and give her the money to get Leo treated. And and, you know, because at one point he made the comment, he has more money than he can spend. Right. And, and, and Kira remembers that. And it's, it, I think it's in the last chapter we were supposed to read that she was headed his, to his door to, to uh, ask him for cash. And, you know, so I think that, that because Andre loves Kira the way he does, he will help her save Leo's life. Yeah, I think so too. It's interesting that she's willing to do anything, right? We see her on the street. She goes to all the party officials. She goes to yeah. Leo's well, aunt, right? She even, she at one point just tries to prostitute herself. She just says, look, I, I really yeah. need the money. If you could just, uh, you know, whatever you want. And uh, the guy Give me this much. And the guy she asked said, People that work in your business don't make that much in a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like, yeah. so it's interesting that she's back in that same situation. But um, and that I think will I think that's thematic as we go forward um, to see uh, what go, what happens between her and her and Andre. But um, you had some issues with Leo the way he the way he was acting. So, um, Me, I, my only issue with Leo is that that he's given up, or it appears that he has, and maybe it's because he's got tuberculosis. I mean, it, you know, he, someone who has a, a terminal disease, you would think would have the will to go out and fight for themselves, to try to stand up for themselves and try to position themselves in a place where they would fight for their own life. Not but I don't see Leo doing that. But Leo, I, mean, I don't yeah, see Leo is, is aristocratic blood to the manner born, and um, it, this is something that I think is beyond. It, it yeah. doesn't occur to him. It doesn't occur to him. I, I, mean, I have a slightly. Oh, go ahead. Lindsay? No, go ahead, Michael. Um, I have a slightly different take. Because I I like him, I, I think he's just being a realist. There is nothing to live for. It's it's there's no future. Good point. And and I I'm like, 
if there's no future, what's the point? And you you hope that something will change, a revolution will come. Right. Or, but isn't or someone his future? Will, someone will solve it, but it's outside yeah. of your capacity. No, but but anything. Michael, isn't his future Kira? I mean, isn't his future based on being with Kira? Yes, but I mean, other like, than that, example, he has no future. You're right, but Kira should be his future, his focus. Yeah, but even so, even so, in his mind, he could be thinking like, maybe my future is Kira, but it's also eating like spoiled food in this terrible room, and we can't <laughs> do anything or go anywhere or enjoy anything except like talking about this, and yeah. we're all so tired, like. Maybe, you know, he's like, I have this illness and I'm going to die. And that's how I get out of it. Like, right. it's freedom. I mean, yeah. I think in a lot of ways, like, not everybody who has an illness, a serious illness, is always going to be like, I got to defeat the illness. Like, it's sometimes people are just like, this is so hard. Like, life becomes so difficult right. that I'm going to give in to this thing because it's actually... Right. be better that way so. that's a really good point because you know it's almost like the the bumper sticker you may have seen over the years life sucks then you die that's the so <laughs> and um what's to do i mean what's what's to live for i mean and i think that's one part of the point that she's trying to make is that collectivism destroys all life-serving values it's a dead hand yeah. Right. <laughs> and I think also just hope, like, you know, we, you know it's really difficult to try to find some hope or to have dreams or try yeah. to be innovative or create things or do things when yeah. there's, it's not possible anymore. Right. He's not going to say, let's go find the best doctors or we're going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, we're going to make sure that I get the best, best care because there's just nothing out there for him. He can't. Yeah. Right. Um, whether he wants to or not, right? Um, so yeah, I, I I think he's being very realistic at that point too. It's like, what? Well, what else do I have to do but drink? Um, I, he's in pain. I think I'm sure. Uh, you remember the Maria Petrovna, and we had that scene of her her death, um, no. and it was not a beautiful death, right? It, it was. Quite, quite painful and quite horrible. And this is effectively what he has to look forward to now. Yeah. And there's also foreshadowing of, of um, Atlas Rugged and Dagny of her fortitude, where someone like Gon goes, oh, this is not going to work. So let's just have a revolution that totally changes. The, let's change the, the, the nature of the game. I'm not going to play by this game. I'm out of here. Yeah. And so Leo's checking out, mm -hmm. but yeah. Kira's hanging in there with whatever remnant of love she can have with him. It's the only last thing that she has. So what I'm seeing right at this moment in the book. Yeah. And um, it foreshadows that this, the woman characters uh, have fortitude to take on and just look for any crumb of excuse to hang in there. I agree. I think that um, it's not talked about enough that uh, these female characters and just how um, optimistic, how uh, intelligent, how resourceful they are, um, and um, how caring they are. Notice Kara is something. Whenever her family needs something, she's there, regardless of whether or not they can give her something in return. Please come over and see Uncle, right, um, Vasily, because he's, uh, after Maria died, he's uh, up upset, right? And she says, sure, of course, I'll, I'll be over, I'll be over tonight. Um, so she keeps that alive in herself. She keeps that sense of life, of, 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 of hope, of what her, of her values. Um, up, up against the most <laughs> yeah you know if Marilyn if I didn't know better I'd say they were all British because it's just kind of like well let's get on with it we'll muddle through uh, type of attitude which is very characteristic of um, 
the second world war generation of british women my mother included and um they uh they were survivors and uh whereas the men you know kind of like shrivel up and recede in this book you know uh vasily is sort of losing his grip um completely but the women are are like rocks they're very strong well, um, uh, another element that's interesting is that Rand has the reputation that her heroes will, you know, walk over corpses to get what they want, and it's all self-centered. Yeah. Like me. So it's interesting that Kira's is that she's authentic. Mm -hmm. She's just a very extremely genuine person, which is distinguishing her from the the fake people that are just spouting mm -hmm. social slogans. Yeah. yeah. But then, but Kara's interesting that her motivation is for Leo um, then to come and visit her family when you know she really when she's called to do it. Life. She's not. She's not like well, it's just about me, and I want to get this is what I want out of life. I want this and this so right. for myself. She's very empathetic to the people that that she loves. I agree. Like sometimes I feel like she's kind of altruistic, which is that's really like is interesting to me in this case because it's not something that I really think about when I think about Rand. Right. Um, interesting to think about that though, because it's a difference of motivation. Because she's not doing this for their own good. She's doing it for hers because she loves Leo and she loves her family and they are valuable to her and she wants them to be there. She's not saying, I'm going to give up myself for Leo. She's saying, myself is better with Leo around. My right. life is better. And I think that difference in motivation is very important. And just as an aside, I think the Rand advocating uh, walking over people came not from her or her books, but rather oh, from yeah. reviews that were written about her books by people who were reacting to uh, a, a funhouse mirror interpretation of her views my my opinion anyway well the, what that's what i think is that those negative reviews about the egocentric i think that's their um quip with authenticity so the critics right don't like to see a, a character that is so authentic about their values their dreams and right. what motivates them so Mm -hmm. so interesting study especially when the author of of those books is uh, outselling um the reviewer like gordy doll who said you know <laughs> horrible things about her and then uh not was not jennifer burns but <laughs> Anne heller who in the biography interviewed gordy doll and he finally came clean and he said the reason i wrote that stuff is because she was outselling me he was selling <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to that authenticity, what about Andre in terms of authenticity and that relationship with Kira? Well, one thing is I'm confused about him now because he's turning his back on her. I'm like, what? They just had this incredible romantic time at the beach and mm -hmm. then he's turning a cold shoulder. So I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. What's wrong with this guy? But, We'll find the party out. is we'll watching. Find. The party is watching. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Charles. Yeah. I think there's a lot of fear, you know, like the the eyes of Sonia are upon him. Somewhere yeah. Else, so. yeah, I I just think there's a lot of things. I think he's not being honest with himself. He he's he he wants well the even this the fact that he wants this relationship with her goes against all of his party ideals, right? right. Um, that bourgeois love that he feels for her is exactly what he has fought against his entire life. And now- uh, but I was thinking that it, it really is a human characteristic to take on your own created values. You, you make them up. Mm -hmm. They may not correspond to reality, but you mm -hmm. just adopt a communistic ideology yeah. or some kind of other ideology or postmodernism. 
and people will stick to it to the grave. They can kill themselves, it kills other people near them, but they will hold on to this ideology. Without and it's um, it seems yeah. so ridiculous and stupid, but people do it. Well, and the thing is they do it uncritically and they don't like to hear criticism. They don't like to hear another analysis. And that, that's part of the problem. Um, you can take on any ideas you want, but you have to ask questions. And people never ask the hard questions. Uh, otherwise, they would realize, okay, well, there's something wrong with this. And, and that's exactly what you should do. You should never embrace anything without being critical. But then if they did that with bad ideas, then that means that they would have to change their idea. And that's the one absolute that they're not going to do. Right. So when when you see people dying because of your um, product that you make or something like that, and then you said, no, but I have to make my, my self-esteem is wrapped up in my product. Exactly. And just, yeah. just well, start. This is a big snowball going down the mountain now because it's not as if Andre can say, oh, hey, hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think we made a mistake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Although he may be thinking that or he may be wondering, he's definitely confused um, as you are, Michael. And I think that we're all meant to right now be confused about what what is going on with with Andre. I think he's written as a confusing character right now, as a conflicted character. Right. Yeah, this yeah, just did as the Seattle I... City Council resigns, you know. <laughs> one other thing I thought is that they may be threatening uh, Kira. And so to protect her, he's stepping up. But yeah, that was possible. one. I thought. I hope it's that. <laughs> yeah, which would be noble, right? And yes. <laughs> but again, right? But it's not something that he's supposed to care about, um, according to his ideology. That's a good point, Marilyn. He's not supposed to hold personal values. All the values have to right. have to be integrated by loyalty to the party. So just by being in love with a person, uh, with an individual, especially one who comes from a bourgeois background, is potentially fatal for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Charles. Okay. And 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 we don't know at this point what Andre's uh, what Andre's participation was in setting up the rules of the purge. And I, I guess I thought that maybe Andre didn't have that much to do with it when he actually asked the question, is there any exceptions to the rule? But we don't know. I mean, he may be a bigger player in that than we think. Yeah. Or Victor yeah, is for sure. Yes. Right. Or it might be, right, the situation where, um, as we've seen, the man maneuvering and the manipulation of people like um, Sonia and Pavel, um, that's a yeah. point where the ideals that um, Andre has are, he's losing ground um, as, as well, right? Um, we're getting. Well, I suspect that he is, Marilyn. Oh, I think he's I, had a sort of existential. I, I suspect that Andre is no. going to come under some sort of fire at some point. Yeah, so he has, he, has this, he has a hidden authentic streak. Well, I think so, and I think that I think that I think that he his love for Kira is going to get in the way. I think right. at some point. Well, it's like, you know, the devotion to the party will last uh, up to the point you see Marilyn Monroe walking away in Niagara. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, one other thing is that Andre seems to have embraced the party authentically. So he's one of the few that actually believes in the ideology. Where the other people, you see that with their social parties, with their, like, when, when the boss leaves and they sit around and gossip. Yeah. About yeah, but which he would never do. He was like, that right. would never occur to him to ever do that. But I think that that's also where the people that are playing the game can recognize that person's still being authentic for our cause, but it's he's not one of us because it's he believes it, and the you trick is it's it. not real. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Very good point. 
this money? How can we make so much money? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering in terms of this of the values of the of the revolution. Um, I wondered that myself. He says he has more money than he can spend. How does he get that? Does it spend? Because yeah. he doesn't need anything, which I think is probably the case. Right. Well, I would I, imagine he lives in a very austere himself, in a very very austere uh, way, as though he doesn't really deserve anything. Well, I think there's related to that woman who comes from England. So you have the socialistic woman who comes from England, oh, yeah. who probably doesn't have much money or anything else, but her clothes right. seem like she's a queen of England coming. Right. You know, yeah. Because she has a normal coat that's just like probably totally average. And so I think that that with Andre, he's probably making, you know, 10 cents more an hour than someone else. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. is enough to have a piece of bacon with his potato. Uh, right. I wasn't bringing that up in terms of um, decrying the rich, far far from it. When I was just trying to figure out are the values of the revolution and how does that, how does that work? Because for my part, I think um, the rich are, I've got no quarrel. Um, we should all be rich. Uh, <laughs> So. Well, I just, you know, I think that he's not interested in the money, but his position and his power is, is giving him a higher salary than what other people are having. Yeah. And I do think it will be important thematically and in terms of the plot, too, because it will, the fact that he has disposable income, as Ron pointed out, will figure in as the, the uh, story continues. Oh, because that's motivating Kira. She didn't want to go towards him. But she's showing that every avenue is cut off from her. So he's her last chance at saving yeah. Leo. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to head into some really interesting territory now. So we have next week um, the last chapter of book one, chapter 17. And then you're, we're going to do also the first chapter of book two. So we're at a transition, transition period here. So just... Um, Pay attention to the, the 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 direction of things. What are what are the what are changes that are being um, are, are, are I, I I anticipate one thing okay. is because of Fran's love of Hugo. This next chapter, I bet the last paragraph is just mind mind blowing. But, <laughs> okay. Well, let's we'll let Hugo, so. Hugo loves that device that when you end something, it's so startling and shocking that something outrageous just happened. And then he opens up with another new chapter where it's like flips again. So I kind of wonder if that technical style will come up. Well, let's start with that next week then. Okay. Okay. All right. Mar Marilyn, 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 before you hang up, is this the, is this now the new join number um, for the meeting? You can continue well, to use this one. It switched from last week to this week.